<laughs> All right, welcome in Evan Lazard down in Foxborough covering the Patriots who are back at practice preparing for the Denver Broncos. And earlier on Thursday, we heard from Bill Belichick who was talking about the rookies, okay? And there's a lot of people here who have been really interested in seeing what some of these rookies can do, particularly the Patriots tight ends who have been total no-shows so far this season. Belichick had a really interesting quote. He said that he thinks these rookies and this rookie class is further behind than ever. And again, I think, Evan, he's comparing this to any rookie class he's had, correct? He's saying these guys are way behind. There's obvious reasons because of the limitations and the schedule and the issues that they had with no real preseason. But on it, why do you think this is, Evan? Why, why, why is this rookie class so far behind all of the others? Oh, man, it's a domino effect all the way back to after the draft. Remember, the players are drafted in end of April. No rookie of- camp, no mini camp, sure. Yeah. Okay. Rookie mini camp right away, which they bring the rookies in. They start teaching the base core fundamentals of the scheme that they're going to be playing in, their roles, all that kind of stuff. That starts in May. Then you get to mandatory mini camp in June. Then you get to a six week training camp in July and August. You got four preseason games on top of that where the rookies and the second year players are playing the lion's share of those snaps so that they can get the repetitions and game action. And the Patriots rookies have had basically none of that. They've had a virtual offseason, no preseason. They've had a couple weeks of training camp. And now we're getting ready for games. You know, it's a much different practice situation when you're not working on core fundamentals. You're not working on your base schematics. You're not working on your plays that you run every single week necessarily. You're working on game plan wrinkles. You're working on things that you're specifically for your opponent coming up that week. So a preparation week during the season for the Denver Broncos, for instance, is a completely different practice format than training camp. And believe losing out on those training camp practices, that really put this class behind across the board. Okay. Well, the counter to that is this. Uh, to, to me, this smacks a little bit of excuse making, Evan, because everybody in the NFL is in the same boat and other people have more rookies contributing more consistently than the Patriots do. And also the Patriots don't have to look too far down their roster to see uh, a couple of rookies who are able to jump right in. And the ones who are doing it don't necessarily make sense. You're looking at Kyle Duggar who played at a very small university and you would figure his learning curve would be the steepest coming in because he's not coming from a major program. There's not a lot of similarities between what he did there where he just got to be a physical freak and dominate and just run all over the field. The intricacies of what he had to learn to play the position. And he's been able to play his way on the field and play a key role. And then you're talking about a sixth round pick, Michael and Wenu as an offensive lineman, the pro football focus would be starting in the pro bowl if it were actually happening uh you know even though it's not technically canceled so uh you have two one definitely playing in a difficult to learn position and another excelling at levels we never expected yet you're looking at the tight ends who asi asi 57 snaps no targets you're looking at three total i mean no games for Keenan and Uche, uh, and three of them are healthy scratches, some with injury there. Anthony Jennings, like, at what point you start looking at the people and, like, maybe these guys don't get it. It's not so much that it's the system or, or the everything that's happened since the draft, but, like, at what point are you starting to put the, put the onus on the players and say, you guys got to pick it up? I know you're not going to like this answer, but next <laughs> You know, I I really just don't think it's fair to judge them this season based off of what we've seen so far this year. I also think one thing that Bill Belichick has harped on continuously when we talk to him about the rookies is that as a coaching staff, you don't want to put a player in the game that's not prepared to do what you're asking him to do. I think putting too much on the rookies' plate when they really are just trying to learn one role or one thing and then stack good data together from there that's where the focus is right now. You know, if you're Devin Asiasi, the focus is on learning your route tree, learning the route concepts, learning the entire offense from a passing standpoint. Then you're going to try to stack on the blocking and the run game standpoint so you can carve out an even bigger role. And I think that what you're seeing is that the Patriots coaching staff is holding these guys back for whatever reason, besides on Wenu. And the guys that have been on the field, like Duggar, like on Wenu, even though Duggar went to a smaller school, He was a three-year starter at Lenore Ryan. He's 24 years old, so he's an older on the older side of the spectrum rookie. And on when he was a three-year starter at Michigan, so those guys have a ton of college experience, whatever level of football it was. Whereas somebody like an Asi Asi, he bounced around. He was started at Michigan, then he transferred to UCLA. He was never really in one program for all that long. 
So there's not a ton of experience there for him just playing football over the last couple of years outside of that one season at the last year in 2019 for UCLA. So I think that there's a lot. It's excuse making if you want to call it that, but I just truly think that the coaches don't want to put them out there in a position where they don't feel comfortable like they know what they're doing. Yeah, and I'm not saying strictly excuse making, which is to cover for something else, but at the end of the day, every team is dealing with it and you knew when you drafted them that this is roughly what this was going to look like so there's no real surprises here so that means you have to prepare for this you're not shocked that you didn't have rookie mini camp or mini camp or really much of a training camp or preseason games this was expected for it though right and the way that they prepared for it was by signing veteran players to play sure positions adrian phillips brandon copeland you know, that's why they brought those types of guys in is because, yeah. they, hey, we drafted Duggar and we drafted Uche and Jennings, but they're probably not going to be able to play for us right away based off of this type of season that we're heading into. Listen, I think we can revisit this maybe around Thanksgiving and see what happens then. Yeah. This team really starts to kind of gear up for a postseason run and, and, and play their best football. Right now, you know, it's it's kind of clear right. at preseason for the Patriots. Yeah. And you're a fan and you get it and you can live with, you know, a depth linebacker coming in and taking away snaps from Jennings until he's there. Understandable. And, and, and also, you're a Patriots fan. You have enough patience. You've seen year two payoffs with people. You know, Jawan Williams has to make you feel a lot better about what you see out of rookies now seeing what you're getting out of him in year two. And certainly Winovich, while he played in year one, has elevated himself to I'm not quite star, but a legitimate contributor on that team so you have some patience but particularly with the tight ends you really wanted to see something here and again you wrote about it we've talked about it rookie tight ends no matter how good they ultimately end up being do have a tough time acclimating to the nfl you don't see monster rookie tight end years so the expectations were already tamped down they've just come good bit below that right now and so that i think is the level of concern so you're right maybe by november you start to see those guys you feel a little bit better but until then it's just holding your breath like does this guy exist you know and you really want to see just a flash it's disappointing, it's disappointing because you certainly saw out in training camp too uche uh, obviously has been injured so that's why he hasn't been out there but guys like uche Devin Asiasi, flashing in training camp and showing that they can do things as pass catchers in Asiasi's case or a pass rusher in Uche's case, they did make plays this summer. The, the problem, I think, that what you're seeing right now is just that they don't really know, feel they trust those guys on game day to know where they're going. Ryan Izzo, for all of his deficiencies, he is the most experienced tight end that they have in this system, and he's the one that really knows where he's going when he is out there, whether it's run or pass. And they obviously just don't feel confident that Asiasi knows the same amount of, has the same amount of knowledge and how would he, given the circumstances. I, I think that this is a completely different program here. It is. I'm so used to rookies not performing here, so I'm kind of just written it off as this is just how Belichick yeah. does it. Because Damian Harris and Jawan Williams were flat out red shirted. So, I mean, right. I mean, so uh, Damian uh, Harris, did I say Williams? Um, Damian, flat out red shirted to the point where you're wondering, like, are these guys busts? And obviously, you're seeing in year two they're not. So, again, you know it's coming, but you're right. It's those flags in training camp, and you wonder, uh, you know, how much of it is in a different system? Would they have been thrown into the fire, warts and all? And then the question really is, Evan, the last question I'll ask is I understand that this is what they do. Um, but is it so bad if you make mistakes or learn a little bit on the fly? Like when, if you're talking about, you're getting certainly a tight end well below replacement level, well, well, well below replacement level production out of what it is you're putting out there. Why not live with the good and the bad there? Uh, is, are they so risk averse that they can't even take a shot with it? That's a good question. I think, honestly, living with the good and the bad just kind of sort of – it comes down to the fact that the Patriots are a team that wants to be winning football games right now. This is not a rebuilding year. This is not a bridge year. They don't use those words in New England. It's win now, regardless of who's under center, whether it's Tom Brady or Cam Newton or Jared Stidham or Brian Hoyer. So in other places, maybe you find out that, okay, these rookies are playing a little bit more, and maybe that offers some excitement for the fan base moving forward, that a rookie is performing extremely well. But I come back to 
the fact that maybe those organizations are not in win now mode. I got six trophies right now behind me because the Patriots kind of go about things one a certain way, and that's not necessarily how you see it across the NFL. Maybe that means you know, look at Washington for example. Terry McLaurin is a guy that a lot of Patriots fans wanted them to draft, right? And he ends up going to the Redskins or the Washington Football Team now, excuse me, and has a great season for them as a rookie. Has a is already off to a good second year start. Would that have production happened here in New England with Tom Brady? Probably not. So it's just the program. It's just the way it goes. It's frustrating. I want to see the rookies out there as well, but unfortunately, that's not what this team is about. No. Yeah, it's much more likely Tom Brady would have made him cry, um, but it is what it is. Um, all right, well, that's it. Again, you're hoping it's every week. It's maybe this could be the week, so we'll see. Uh, was Keen out there today? Keen was uh, was uh, out there today. Yeah, I mean, these guys are always out there. Uh, Keen has been a healthy participant for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, couple of weeks now. His neck injury has been removed from the list for a while. So. Yep. Well, this is all mental. This is all just being able to know where you're at and, and being able to run what they're asking you to do. Well, again, not having practice for as much as they have, it's very unlikely you're going to see somebody uh, unproven who has not been game tested this week. But again, you're hoping no COVID scares, a little bit more practice. And you, as you said, as we inch closer towards Thanksgiving, maybe you start to see these guys because they desperately need it. And again, there's always the trade market, but we can talk about that as we get a little closer to it as well. Uh, as always, you can find all of our material uh, and all of the videos from Foxborough and throughout on our YouTube channel, Patriot Press Pass, and everything Evan Lazar writes about the Patriots and the matchup coming up this week at clnsmedia.com. Thanks.